Hello guys, welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Now that we know more about pulleys, we're going to tackle a problem that's a bit more advanced. In this case here, we have a collar that can move freely left to right, and um, it's attached by two pulleys by, to this block here that can move up or down. This problem here, we're actually going to use conservation of energy to solve, as opposed to only using uh, the Newton equations yeah, for movement. The problem reads, the system shown is at rest when a constant 150 Newton force is applied to collar B. If the force acts through the entire motion, determine the speed of the collar B as it strikes support at C. Right here. B. After what distance D should the 150 Newton force be removed if the collar is to reach support C with zero velocity? So the first thing we're going to note is that part A and part B are distinct, right? Because on part A, let me remove this, on part A, what's happening is that when my collar B reaches this point here, it will have a certain velocity V because that force has been, this 150 Newton force is being applied throughout the whole motion. So when it reaches here, it will have picked up some velocity because we know the force is going to cause an acceleration, which is going to increase the velocity. So there will be a, for, a velocity B by the end of it. On the uh, second part, right, so on this part here, part B, what it's asking us is, okay, so how long should I apply this um, force for? Not how long in terms of time, because what's the length, right, that I should apply this force for, so that when it reaches point C, my velocity is zero. So it's no, so know that they're distinct situations. All right, so let me get this guy back into its original track. There you go. Okay, cool. So this is a energy conservation problem. We are going to notes that things are at rest, the system is at rest at first, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do and draw uh, the ground. So let's say, just for the sake of argument, the ground is over here. Okay, this is ground. Okay, so there is a, a height, whatever height this initial height is, just call it height h, okay, of a. So what's the first thing we're going to do to the system? We're going to do uh, the vectors defining the position of these guys in respect to the pulleys just like we did in previous problems and i'll leave you know the intro problems over here for you guys um so let me go ahead and split so i'm going to take this center pulley here i'm going to do so i'm going to create a axis system and another one here and i'm going to create two vectors my vector xb is going to go from this axis system that i created all the way to b right Oops, xb in this vector here. So if b is further down over here, then my xb is going to go, it's going to be greater, right? If my b is, comes closer, then my xb is going to be smaller. Uh, note that I'm already defining this to be the positive direction as well, right? So my left is my positive direction. Let's put it over here. Leftwards is my positive direction. And likewise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create one that is going downwards, and it's leaving my system here all the way to where a is. Same thing applies if a goes, uh, travels upwards, then this guy's going to be smaller. If a travels downwards, this guy's going to be bigger okay so again we're defining that downwards is my positive direction you can choose whatever you want when you're solving these just make sure you're consistent throughout okay and the next thing i'm going to do is again do my equation for the distance of this full rope here which is going to be rope or cord whatever you want to call it which is going to tell me that two times x b plus one x a is always going to be a constant All right and again if you're not sure about this check the previous videos on this that we go step by step and I'm going to derive this, okay, I'm going to derive these guys in respect to, derive uh, the, the position in respect to time, and this is going to render 2 times velocity b plus velocity a has to be 0 because the um, derivative of a constant is 0. So this is telling me that, okay, so that means that va is just minus 2 vb. So whatever the velocity of b is, whatever the velocity of the collar b is, the velocity of a is double that and going on the opposite direction, which makes perfect sense, right? If this guy is going leftwards, that's a positive, that's a positive direction that we determined over here, which means that this guy has to be going negative, which is upwards. Right? So that means all this is saying is that as b is traveling leftwards, a is going to be traveling upwards, and as a is traveling downwards, b is going to be traveling rightwards, right? So exactly what we would expect from this system. Cool. Now let's start looking at energy. So we have this one equation. Let's just leave it on here on the side. What do we know about energy? Well, we know that energy the amount of energy is going to be the integral of the force over a certain distance. As I'm going from the distance of point 0.1 to point 0.2, let's call it point 0.1, let's, let's do P. P for point 0.1 to point 0.2, right? In our case, the 150 force is constant throughout the whole thing. So it can, this can live the derivative, and then we're left with just this, and then delta D, or delta, the difference between the 
the two points, which is just a distance traveled, right? So in the case of A, let me be clear about this, in the case of part A, the energy that this uh, force is going to give to the whole system is just this 150 times the 600 millimeters, which is 0.6 meters, right? So the energy given, so let's put here, like the energy will be just 150 newtons times the 0.6 meters, and newton times meters is the same thing as a joule, right? So this is just 90 joules. So that force there is giving 90 joules to our system throughout the whole, throughout the whole uh, space between where the collar is at rest, all the way until it reaches part C. That's the total energy given to the system. This energy is going to be used. Oops, this energy is going to be used for two things, right? This energy is going to be used to start to to start this from rest and give it some movement, to give some velocity, which is going to be kinetic energy. So kinetic energy of B, and also kinetic energy of A, because this guy is going to move if the other one moves, right? They're related by this uh, relationship that we drew before. And we're giving also potential energy to A, because A is traveling upwards. So as it's going upwards, this distance here from our imaginary ground all the way to where A is is going to change, right? So in other words, this 90 here is being converted into kinetic energy and potential energy. Let's, because we know that we cannot create or destroy energy, so that means that all this energy, all this, th these 90 joules are being used for either the gain of kinetic energy on A or B, or, or I should say, or potential, but in this case, and potential, right? So we can write this like so. Let's uh, let's put it into two states. All right, on state one, that is before, should we call it before and after? Before and after makes sense. So before, and after, that's going to make more sense, more sense, I guess. What do we have before? Before, we can have the kinetic energy of A, the kinetic energy of B, and the potential energy of A. Energy of A. And afterwards, we are, we have the same things, right? Kinetic energy of A, kinetic energy of B, plus potential energy of A. But from here to here, we're applying, you know, a force D 150. So let's just put the integral of PD, okay? FD. Okay, so that means that this guy here should be equal to this guy here plus the force that was applied, right? In other words, because we've, we're giving energy to the system, this system should be exactly the same as before, plus the 90. So it can be after plus 90 joules. You think of that that way. Okay, so if we're writing the whole thing down, we're saying that the kinetic energy of A um, before plus the kinetic energy of B before plus the potential energy of A before this be equal to the kinetic eps plus the 90 joules. It has to be equal to the kinetic energy of A after plus the kinetic energy of B after plus the potential energy of A after. And note that I'm not putting any potential energy for B because B stay in the same height, right, in relationship to my ground here. Regardless of what happens to B, you probably want to move this one. Right, so this height here, let's call that guy um, Z. So regardless of where this guy moves, the distance is always going to be z, so the potential energy does not change whatsoever from one to the other. Right, cool. Yeah, so what do we know about these guys? We know that because they're at rest, so because, let's put it like this, because at t equals zero, that is before, uh, vA equals vB equals nil, then the kinetic energy, A equals kinetic energy B, which equals zero, right? nil. So these guys are going to go away. What about this guy here? Well, we have some potential energy to start with, right? It's going to be the mass of A times the gravity, pulling down, acceleration of gravity, which is going to give me a force, weight, and then times the distance H. Right? So the left-hand side of the equation becomes the weight of A times H plus the 90 joules that we're putting into the system. It has to be equal to the kinetic energy of A, which you can write as the mass of A times the velocity of A squared, divided by 2, plus the mass of B, the velocity of B squared, divided by 2, plus the weight of A, that did not change, times a new distance down to height, plus whatever we, we gained in, let's just call it delta Y, whatever we traveled upwards, right? Know that this guy here is exactly the same as this guy here, so they can cancel each other out, and we're left with 90, and I'm just going to copy-paste this, Oh, that's the same, except now we don't have this anymore. We just have this. Okay, so pretty much what we're saying is what we said in the beginning, right? In just mathematical terms. The 90 of energy that was given, that's the 100 and 
50 newtons over the 0.6 distance is being converted into the kinetic energy for A and B and the potential energy for A. Okay, so what we're looking for in this question is what's the velocity of B? That's the question, the unknown, right? What's the velocity of B at this second state, at, at the state before? Remembering always that the state of before is when a uh, color B, so call, which is color B, is at point C, right at the end of the uh, the um, thingy there, the system there. Just this guy here. Okay, that's what our before is in this case. So we have, as in unknowns, we know the weights, we know the masses, that's fine. What we don't know at this very instance is this distance travel upwards. But this is quite easy to find, right? Because we know that for every one, for every one meter that is traveled this way, one meter is kind of an exact rate because it's traveling 60 meters. For every one centimeter traveled that way, this guy here has to travel two centimeters upwards, right? Because you need, you know, double the amount of rope here on B as you need here. We actually said this right in the beginning over here. We created this relationship between the two of them, right? So, or you can think of it like this using this equation here, right? If my B has traveled, you know, 60, uh, what is that, 0.6 meters, then it means that my A has traveled 1.2 meters, right? During the same time, obviously. So that means that, so therefore, so therefore, WY, that is how much height was gained as B went leftwards, is 1.2, right? Just 2 times 0.6. And what about this guy? This is the other unknown that we have. Well, this guy, we have a relationship for this, right? We have a relationship that says that VA is just negative to VB. So I can substitute that in there. And then this whole thing becomes 90 will be equal to mass of A, which is three. So go ahead and put three kilograms. No, not for now. Mass of A times two VB squared over two plus mass of B, VB squared over two plus weight of A times 1.2. Okay, we know this guy is three. This is, change colors. This is three kilograms. This is eight kilograms. And this is uh, three times 9.81. So the only unknown here number wise is what we're looking for VB. And I got this, so this ended up being looking like so. VB is equal to the square root of 109.4 with over 20 and this square root obviously can be positive or negative and then 2.34 meters per second okay so this is the velocity the, the absolute number is 2.34 meters per second we know that we can discard the um, negative because this has to be going on this velocity has to be pointing let's do it when my b reaches this point here, we know the velocity is pointing this way here that we determined to be positive. So that's going to be positive vb, right? So vb is positive, and it's 2.34 meters per second. So that's the first part, part a. So that's the answer for part a. Now, for part b, what is happening on part b? On part b, when we reach this velocity, uh, sorry, the point c here, this velocity is zero, right? They're asking us to calculate how much for the length that I should apply this this to this force here so that I can reach a velocity of zero. So again, energy is just force times the integral force distance. Because the force is a constant, what we're asked is, okay, how much energy do I need so that I can find the distance? How much energy do I need by the end of it? Okay, how much energy do I need so that at the end of the thing, the velocity is zero? So what does that mean, the velocity to be zero? If that's the case, then that means that my B is over there, and that means that my A is going to be higher. Let's put it just here for the sake of it. My A is going to be there. So if my velocity B is zero, because the two are related, then that means that my velocity A is also zero. Yeah, they're both nil. So that means the kinetic energy for both of them is going to be zero as well. So what has changed from the initial scenario, which is this guy here, just ignoring my joints, what has changed from that scenario to the one from here? The only thing that changed energy-wise is that now we have that extra boost in potential energy, where is my thing? The extra boost in potential energy, so that difference from here to here. This difference in energy here is only difference from before and after on part B of the problem. And this is quite easy to find, right? Because we know this is delta Y of two, 1.2 meters. And we know we just need to multiply that by the weight of A. And that's the amount of energy that we need to be able to 
reach velocity zero. So let's calculate that and then we can talk a bit more about that, see if we can make more sense out of it. So what we're looking for is this, uh, we know we need some energy to do this and the energy is just this and this. In this case, the, the force is constant 150. So it's just the integral of d, so in this case, it's just the distance traveled, right? And what we're looking for is the distance traveled, it's just called just delta d, delta d traveled, which is just gonna be the energy required divided by the 150 newtons. What is the energy required? We just found out the energy required is just the weight of A times the 1.2 meters. And we have all that information. So this is just gonna be three divided by 150. So this is gonna be three kilograms times 9.81 times 1.2 meters divided by 150. What is this? Uh, let's just check units before we move on. We have kilograms, then we have meters per second squared, and then we have meters. And we're dividing the whole thing by newtons. This fella here, kilograms times, I mean, this is mass times acceleration. Newton's second law tells us this is a force, which is so newtons, right? So this thing cancels out this thing, and we're left with meters, which is a unit for distance, which is great. That's what we're looking for. Cool. And uh, number wise, I got 0.2. So we get 0 0.235, 0 0.235, and this is given in meters. So this is the same thing as 235 millimeters. Okay, so that's the distance that we need to give energy so that. Okay, so that does it for this problem, but that, let's uh, dwell a bit more on it. Let's see if we can get some insights out of this. What is this telling me? It's telling me that if I want the things to, if I want the system, might, might want to redraw this. Let me redraw this here on the bottom. So we have our B, it's standing here on the side, and then it has the little pulley here, and then there's the rope that goes around like this, it touches another pulley and goes down, and then we have A over here. Higher than it was before, right? And then this guy goes all the way to the Okay, so this is the, the end situation there, right? What is going on? Why did it, what are we saying? We're saying that the distance required, this was originally 600 mils. Okay, so if we give energy to about two thirds of the way, if we, sorry, not energy, if we apply that force for about two thirds of the way, the, the 235 mils, and then stop applying the force, we've given enough energy for it to go, come out and rest, pick up its kinetic energy, decreases kinetic energy all the way until it's at rest again by the end of it. So in other words, what we're doing is we're taking that force, okay? That force is, because we're applying over a distance, it's giving us some energy. And this energy is being used for two things, actually for three things, right? To convert this into kinetic energy of B, kinetic energy of A, and also some potential energy of A. By the time we stop applying the force, right? So when we reach this point here, which is two thirds along the way, which is 235, Mills as we calculated. And then at, when we get to that point, we stop applying the force. So what, what do we have at that instant? We have B with a certain, certain velocity, we have A with a certain velocity, and we have A at a certain height. It's not quite here yet. It's probably, I don't know, let's just put it down here. Right there. Okay? And we know that for this for this uh, color B to reach the end point here, the, the, the left-hand side, we know that A still needs to travel a bit more upwards. How much upwards, how much more, I don't know. We haven't calculated. We can find out, but we don't need to. Okay. What we do know is that by the end of it, it will have traveled 1.2 meters upwards because that's double the amount, the, the total length. So what's happening from this point on is that these guys, we're converting the energy from these guys to potential energy. Right? So what's happening, well, this is like when we stop applying the force. And from this point onwards, what we have is that this guy is being converted into potential energy for A. This guy is being converted to potential energy for A, which is obviously summing up with what the, the height it already had. And then by the end of it, what we have is 1.2 meters in height times the weight of it, which is the new potential energy. Okay, so we start from rest. There's no kinetic energy or uh, difference in potential energy, let's put it that way. Then we start applying the force. As we start applying the force, we gain both kinetic energy and potential energy. Then we stop applying the force at about 235 mils uh, from the origin. And then after we stop, stop applying the force, then we're having the conversion of kinetic energy back into potential energy. All the way until all the kinetic energy, exactly all the kinetic energy became potential energy, at which point the velocities are gonna be zero for A and B and the potential energy is going to be exactly 1.2 meters times the weight of A. All right, hope this was, you know, understandable. If you have any questions, let me know. Just put down other comments below. If this